Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I love study, I'm Muhammad Jim, and today we are gonna learn how hackers can hack you with simple IP addresses. In this Let's video, I'm going to break down exactly what a hacker can do with your IP address. No boring theory, real examples, real tools, and how it happens in the real world. By the end, you'll see the tricks hackers use and how to protect yourself. Let's start simple and then go all the way to the advanced stuff. All right, let's start with geolocation tracking. This is one of the most interesting and honestly creepiest things a hacker can do with your IP address. And stick around because later, I'll show you how hackers can actually grab your IP without you even realizing it. So, once a hacker gets your IP, one of the first moves is to figure out where you are. With just that number, they can guess your city, your region, sometimes even your neighborhood. Then, using OSINT tools, they can zoom in like Google Maps on steroids, right to your home or workplace. Let me show you instead of just talking. I went to one of these IP lookup sites, pasted my IP, hit enter, and boom. It's all there. Organization, postal code, ISP, exact location on a map, all from one little number. Scary? Yeah, welcome to the internet. All right, after that comes network reconnaissance. This is where the hacker starts poking around your system to see what doors you've accidentally left unlocked. The first move, scanning for open ports. And they've got tools like Nmap that make it stupid easy. Once they see those open ports, they check what's running behind them. Maybe you've got an old FTP server, a remote desktop RDP left on, or even outdated SMB sharing. If it's old and unpatched, that's basically an invitation. They can even figure out your router's brand and model. Why? Because once they know that, they can look up public exploits made just for that device. And yeah, they're often free to download. Let me show you. I ran an Nmap scan on my own IP just for this demo, and here's what it found. Open ports, service names, and versions. Imagine if I wasn't the one scanning this, and it was someone who actually wanted in. All right, next up, DDoS attacks. I'm sure most of you have at least heard about DDoS, right? But if you don't know, it's basically when an attacker floods your IP with so much fake traffic that your internet just collapses. Think of it like a hundred thousand people calling your phone at the same time. Your line just dies. So what does that mean for you? Let's say you're gaming, maybe streaming, everything's smooth, then suddenly boom, your connection drops, everything lags, you're kicked out. That's not bad Wi-Fi, that's someone blasting your IP to take you offline. And the crazy part? Attackers don't even need a supercomputer. They can rent botnets online, dirt cheap, and aim all that traffic at you. That's how easy it is. All right, then comes brute force attempts. If a hacker finds ports like SSH, RDP, or even Telnet open, the next move is simple. Start hammering them with password guesses. They'll run automated tools that can try thousands of combinations every second. And here's the scary part. Most people still use weak passwords like 123456 or password. If that's you, it's basically game over. Once the hacker cracks it, they've got full access. That means they can log in like they own the place, browse your files, install malware, even lock you out of your own system. Next up is malware delivery. If a hacker finds a vulnerability on your system, they can use it to inject malware straight into your device. No pop-ups, no warning. It just happens in the background while you keep using your computer like nothing's wrong. And once that malware is in, your device isn't really yours anymore. It could be used to spy on you, steal your files, or even worse, turn your computer into a botnet zombie that attacks other people. For example, that's exactly how the Mirai botnet worked. It infected thousands of devices like routers and cameras, then used them all together to launch massive attacks. Most people had no idea their device was even part of it. And finally, IP spoofing, also known as impersonation. This is when a hacker takes your IP and uses it to launch attacks, download illegal stuff, or try to break into systems. On paper, it looks like you did it, not them. That means if the wrong people start investigating, 
All the blame points to your IP address while the real hacker stays hidden. For example, attackers often spoof innocent IPs when launching DDoS attacks. So when investigators look at the traffic, it seems like it came from you. Imagine being accused of something you didn't even do just because your IP was faked. All right, I could keep going with even scarier stuff. Hackers can do with your IP, like social engineering, or even selling it on the dark web. But by now, you get the point. Your IP address is more important than most people think. I gave you examples to show the reality, but of course, I can't fully demonstrate attacks here. YouTube's policy doesn't allow that. Still, if you're curious, you can try some of the safe tools yourself and see just how much can be revealed. But before we end, let me answer one last question. How do hackers actually get your IP in the first place? It's easier than you think, through emails, links, online games, even something as simple as clicking on the wrong website. Once they've got it, everything I showed you becomes possible. So protect it, be careful what you click, and always stay one step ahead. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. One life, one shot, make it count.